This is Normal Night on BBC Two. No, no, it's not. It's Weird Night. Or is it? This is Weird Night. You're watching BBC Two. God, look, that's so weird. That all oh, weird. That is all oh, genuinely weird. Have you seen this? It's oh, oh, weird. Very, very weird. Look at it.、Mm. Weird night continues. In 40 minutes, Martin the Vampire starts our all-night session of the weirdest movies ever made. But first, weird thoughts. What is weird? What is normal? And what lies beyond human sense? Reasonable people discuss the boundaries of reason. How weird was it for you? Good evening. What are we doing this Saturday night, watching all this weird sh- stuff? Weird enough to be in Blackpool on such a cold, out-of-season, post-illumination Saturday evening. Weirder still to think that we're about to enter Ripley's, believe it or not, auditorium, therein to discuss the true nature and deeper realities of weird. Of our fascination with the weird, we're going to explore with a bunch of not so weird people in the bowels of the auditorium. But first, I'm joined by the founder of Forty and Ties, Bob Rickard. We're having a wander around the auditorium. Oh, look at that car! That's horrid. What is that? A genetic mutation or something? Well, these are bizarre. The myth is that the waters are so cold in Canada, is it, that they have fur-coated fish? And, and apparently,、um, some Scottish museum refused to believe that it the wasn't. The National Museum of Scotland took it seriously. We love you, people up there. Good luck. Enjoy tonight's program. Well, this one did exist. The human unicorn. Almost certainly. Explain the lighthouse man to me. Good heavens. Well, this is a freak of a different sort. Had a hole cut in his head. She put a lighted candle. Oh, Bob, my favourite. Isn't this? This is a painting on. On toast. Well, Ripley had one of the world's. Greatest private collections of anthropological artifacts.、Oh, I appreciate it here, particularly the penis sheath. This guy is the amazing Orchante. Now he told me to stand on him, but I'm not going to. He's got his self-hypnotizing out of it. I'm not、oh, going to stand. Oh, there we go. Oh God, you're just great. Be, be very careful, please. Okay. Come on, let me get. Nails, nails, come on. Off you get. Right, we're out of here. Let's just wake him up now. See what? Up, Oshante. Yeah, sitting up. Okay. Well done, Oshante. Fine.、Oh, no holes. Look, nothing. No, no. Look at that. Good. That's sharp. Let's leave before the sword thing. I want to be out of here.、Well. The amazing Orchante. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it.、Um, can I introduce you to the other guests we have tonight to discuss the weird? Going round from the left, Dave Punter. Dave is、um, a professor of literature, English literature. Dave, is that fair enough to say? That is true. Specialising in the literature of terror. Yes. Thank you for coming here tonight. Terrified, sitting next to you, James Randi, professional charlatan, former carnival act, debunker, mystic. Etc. All of those things. All of those things. You met Bob here. Bob in his green shirt. We enjoyed that walk around the museum, didn't we?、Mm, yes. Now, Lynn Picknett. I'm working very hard on this. She's actually Britain's only, only paranormal agony aunt. That's me. Is that nice to be a paranormal agony aunt? Especially the only one. Right. And、mm. um, sitting behind you, snuggling with the robot, is Mary Beard. And Mary is a classicist. That's right. From Cambridge. From Cambridge. Finally, Jenny Randall, who is a One of the leading experts in Britain on UFOs, time travel, and the rest. Absolutely, yes. Weird night, ladies and gentlemen. Weird night. Are things getting weirder in the mid nineties? 
Just I think the they've same. always been weird, but perhaps in a in a different way. Perhaps technology has brought weirdness to a, to a new height. Perhaps it's just changed the character of it. But if you go back into history, you find that there have always been things that are considered weird. If you have, as a definition of weird, something which appears not to have a ready explanation, something that appears to be out of joint with nature. Oh, that's quite a good... Actually, for definitions, does anyone go along with that definition, Lynn? How about other? Just other. Other? Yeah. It's not original, it's Ken Campbell's. It's Ken Campbell, yeah. the theatrical <laughs> impresario and actor. Get off my microphone, pussy cat. Oh, we, we had started off as a noun, but it just meant um, fate, mm. destiny, what one was headed well, for. That's what so I thought it became it, the whole kind of stall of things in the future. So it had to do with precognition and knowing about the future mm. when you didn't want to. And that kind that's of like Macbeth, the weird sisters, that's because they the tell change. the fate. That's what made the great mm. change, yes. Though nobody knows whether Shakespeare meant weird or wayward. His spelling was so bad, we didn't know to tell. <laughs> Well, if, he did, if he didn't mean weird, he was the first one to make it an adjective, actually, for what it's worth. All right. And we've gone on from there. And All the right. weirds, of course, are also the fates. Okay. Um, but that's why so. Lynn's oh. better, isn't it? That's why Lynn's uh, other is a better word. Because, um, you know, if you go back to you know, my time, go back to the Greeks, and then something that happened on the other side of the Atlantic um, was always the other. Something mm. that happened on the other side of, you know, the Aegean Ocean was mm. the other. And so the other can be much more expandable and contractible. I mean, in a way, that's what we watch tonight, wandering around here. Well, the night before, it's things from other places at that point when people weren't travelling there on cheap charter flights. It's kind of the exotic experience, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's the exotic to one, yeah. wh wh whichever point of view you start from. And that can be whether you've gone there on yes. a cheap charter flight yes. or whether it's in your head yes. in the, in the yes. sitting room. Well, I think there's something room. reactionary too. It's a challenge against authority. People don't like to believe mm. that the scientists of the world can explain mm. everything, so they challenge it by things that happen to them and say, aha, this won't fool, fool you. Well, they're right too, aren't they? I mean, it's not that this, man's a, this man, though, now, we, we're going to have this later, but he's going to start now, isn't he? Because you think that science is right, and that no, Jenny... No, no. no go on. No. no, the definition of science as, as a group of people who think they know everything is, is a popular misconception. Science, <laughs> of all things, knows that it doesn't know. Um, perhaps like Socrates. Science is the study of the world around us to the best the of our knowledge. The establishment, James, the scientific <laughs> establishment, rubbishes everything that it doesn't quite act, everything outside mm. itself. Including other science. That, that is what Including scientists believe yeah. about yeah. themselves. Yeah. That yeah. is what scientists believe about themselves. But I think the popular conception of scientists is something True. quite else. True. Mm. Uh, and I think the popular conception is wrong. No, 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 wait a minute. What's the popular conception then, Bob? Well, I think you have it, you have it actually portrayed in, in, in almost all the popular cultural avenues, the mad scientist. Uh, I think the average person feels that the world is actually out of control. It's not better for science. Science hasn't made our lives, I mean, medically perhaps, but we still have wars, we still have famines, we still have conflict, um, we still have dissatisfaction, hunger, and so on. And uh, I, I, I think that the, the, there is a bit of PR for science that goes around that science will actually solve all mankind's problems. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't quite worked out like that. And there is this feeling, I think, of um, alienation from the ordinary person's point of view uh, between them and science. And is that why things, to a degree, are getting weirder? Fortean times used to sell 3,000, now sells 30. I mean, well, we, we actually um, we get have news a paranormal clippings. agony. Aunt. <laughs> we, we get news clippings and, and all sorts of fe uh, news feeds from all over the world every month. We have thousands upon thousands of news clippings coming in. And uh, there is no sign of that abating. These are all reports of various degrees of credibility. Um, and there's, there is no doubt in my mind that um, I think people, uh, it, there is an increasing belief amongst ordinary people uh, which, would, which is equivalent to the uh, belief in the supernatural in the medieval times. There is an abdication of belief in science and now I think people are re almost ready to believe anything. But it seems to me that the scientists and the supernaturalists, I mean, share a similar approach. I mean, things that we can't explain happen all the time. I believe that. In principle, But yeah. everybody is trying to explain them. Maybe, yes, maybe yeah. the work of the imagination is to say that things that we can't explain happen all the time. I think we've been poisoned by our psyches, by our collective unconscious, by our dreams, because we've moved so far away from being able to deal in myths and symbols like the ancients, and who were used to the idea of gods and, and so on. I'm used to 